Look at that. After the historic tales of shipwreck we heard last week in the Wardrick Wells Land and Sea Park, we were saddened to see a modern-day shipwreck right in front of our anchorage in Hawksbill Key. Join us this week as we explore the anchorage and try to piece together what we think may have happened. Look at that. This poor sailboat, and even more is the people that were in it. I'm guessing, so this is what I think happened. I think the boat was anchored out like we are here, but they were anchored here on a strong east wind. And so the wind was blowing in on shore, and I think either their, probably their anchor gave away, or, I mean, this is just one scenario, but the anchor gave way, it broke loose, or the anchor chain or the anchor rope broke, and, uh, or something came undone, and the, once that keel hits the ground, you know, it's, it's done, you can't get it out. And the wind just kept, the waves just kept bringing it in farther and farther. If you look up there, you can see the mast is broken off, and I think the mast hit these rocks here. I think the I think the mast hit the rocks and and that is uh, you know because the boat would just start to keel over as it got in shallower so it would be laying on its side and you can really tell if you look here you can really see see look at there's just all the gel coat is worn off the boat it's right down to the raw fiberglass and uh, and that's from rubbing in the sand so it's been laying on a sand I guess probably broke off all the stanchions on the side here like I mean look at this here's here's a turnbuckle for one of the uh, one of the stays this one's still in good shape um, but it's it's uh, it's it's seen a lot of trauma and force and uh, oh, well I don't think it's broken off I think it's just bent there's a rudder right there See the rudder's on there. It's just that the shaft is right bent. bent. So, and how it, long ago do you think this happened? Like, there's no rust. There's no rust on on or barnacles or anything. No, I don't like, think. If this is relatively recent. I think. I think so. Yeah. I mean, this guy slapped a lot of stuff. Look at that. That's 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 that running board material, that diamond deck or whatever they call it, right here. I mean, that's what they're they've used it so that whoever it is didn't spend a lot of money on the boat. Patched it up. Patched it up, and I think that could be one of the issues if he had wasn't using a good anchor, wow. or if maybe he had a, like a, a, you know, just using an outboard here, and if he was using a, maybe an old outboard, maybe the engine died on it, and and he couldn't get himself out of trouble. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Who knows? There could be a bunch of stories, but you could tell it. I mean, it had a, it had a this solar is, power. Yeah. This is all. This is for the for the solar. Um, um, panels. Panels that were on the roof, yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Yeah, Very you know, unfortunate. I, think, I can't feel bad. And when you look, yeah. look at look on the shore here, Joel. Look at all the stuff laying up here. Like this could this had to have happened just a little while ago. This this must have happened just a little while ago because look at all the stuff here. I mean you have what is Spice this? Is paprika. Spice paprika. Looks like paprika red. Yeah. You've got like Dunkin' on. Donuts coffee, you got a bag of coffee, and yeah. scotch guard like filters, you've got knee pads. You yeah. know, you start to look at these items and you piece together stories of a person's life. Yeah. Um, There's a new shoe. A brand new shoe. Yeah. A thermos. And yeah. still some of them are flares. almost usable. There's flares. I mean, they didn't try to use a flare, so it couldn't have been, at, I wouldn't think it was at nighttime they needed the help. Flare. There's a dive knife here. The dive knife, but it's rusted and the tip is broken off. Yes, just garbage everywhere. There's another bottle of alcohol here that we found. Uh, you know, all kinds of personal items. You know, too. It's really, it's, it's really sad. 
After exploring the shipwreck, we hiked up and over a ridge and discovered a beautiful tidal plain. We ended up spending the rest of the afternoon swimming and exploring the area. I love the way these mangrove roots just kind of skip, skip, skip and embed themselves in sand that you would think would be potentially zero nutrition for them. But when the salt water comes up, they get their drinks and that helps them to survive. These little tidal rivers that hold some tiny little fish. We were searching for bonefish, of course. Michael saw baby barracuda, but that was it. Michael got a chill while he was snorkeling in a creek, a oh. deep creek, and uh, he is warming up. So this is hilarious in the Bahamas. I know that creek was, I don't know whether it was spring fed or what it was, but the temperatures were really cold. And I wanted to do some uh, video of um, just fish living amongst the mangroves. And I wanted to see what different types of species were there. And uh, I spent, I guess, too much time in the water. And it's you almost like, feel like you have hypothermia. Uh, yeah, I just can't seem to get warm. Can you imagine not getting warm in the Bahamas? I know, that's why I'm laughing. We're not sure if it's bubbling up. Maybe that's the other thing. Maybe it's a freshwater feed in. Oh, but it should be warm and, and it's not. It was really, it was much colder than the actual ocean. And uh, all I had was just a, a, a thin, um, uh, wetsuit top on and that just did not cut it and uh, man I got really cold but I spent a long time in there you did yeah yeah but it was I think it was worth it now you're getting cozy oh I think it was just to be fun like whether or not you yeah. got good footage from there it's just yeah. it was fun yeah. tinkering around and here you are after a big beautiful lunch of oh, pasta yeah. and salad yeah it's siesta time yeah it's a perfect spot for a siesta Okay, mm -hmm. you have a nap. I think, like you said, it offers more. Um, yeah, no, it offers more protection. Yeah, uh, we're just we're just trying to uh, figure out. We're we're supposed to get a strong south wind here tomorrow, and uh, is it tomorrow or tomorrow night? Tomorrow, I think it's tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. So tomorrow night we're spreading. So we're thinking about moving either today or tomorrow morning. And uh, this is, this is, there's west. So there's south. And uh, what we're trying to do is, uh, is, is figure out what the depth here. Well, you know, in the Bahamas, it's almost impossible to look down in the water and go, oh, it's like four feet deep. We just, you just don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. Um, so I'm just going to drop this anchor over. And, this, and then roughly this will tell us what the depth is. Oh boy, that's not too deep. Actually, that's five feet five deep. Five feet deep. It's five feet deep. So, um, but we're sitting close to high tide. Right. So we would still have, if I, let's say I draw three feet with my motor up, we still have two feet underneath the keel. So it'd still be okay here. And we can test a couple other spots. Doing our homework. Yeah. Which we don't always do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tie a knot right here that I can get out. There. Okay. So there, that's not 
that I need that I can just say, well, there's my feet. But, uh, now I'm just going to just test it once in a while here to see what the depth is here. Oh, that's a lot shallower. So it was deeper there than it is here. You know, it's all about the tides, right? The tides create currents. The currents change the bottom structure, you know, change the, the, where the sandbars are. So any place where there's a lot of current, a lot of times there can be a hole blasted through there, and that's a deeper spot. And then there's places where the where the current is not so strong, and that is where the uh, and that is where the, the sand sort of piles up. So we're gonna keep looking around here for something. Okay, so what I, I did now, I found an extra foot right here. Julia, she keeps pointing this camera in every direction. I mean, one moment it was shooting down at the top of me. I, so right now I found easily another foot. Yeah, I found another foot here, so that's good. So obviously I don't have a GPS with me. I didn't bring a phone or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use what they call triangulation. So I'm gonna use the, um, there's some white leaves on top of that hill and then I'm going to use the, um, there's a little cut right here. So between that cut and those leaves, this is where we're going to drop. I'd like to go by that, by that. There's actually a, a ray on the bottom, but I'm thinking he might move. <laughs> <laughs> by the time we come Oh, back. there's another one. This is really going to get confusing. <laughs> really? Isn't that what, that was that one there. There's, a, there's another one right there. Oh, that's so just swimming. Let's yeah. get in the water now and swim with them. Yes. Oh, there's a shark. No. <laughs> I knew that you would just I knew that would end that just quick. Just trying to scare me. There is a cut there. Look. Well, you're not scared there's a river of sharks. You swam with sharks. I know. It's just All right. Want to right. keep going over there? There's mooring balls there too, right? Yeah, but I want protection from that south wind. I yes, want to be here. Yes, yes, yeah. I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 